Okay, now we have learned the basics of AutoCAD. It's time to learn a few more advanced tools. And uh, I'm going to take the uh, carpet that we drew in the first lecture here, the first um, uh, video, uh, where we went over the basic commands and the sort of user interface. Now we're going to learn um, some of the more advanced tools um, first of all, uh, we uh, drew our rectangle and we were trying to draw kind of a carpet pattern. Um, we, draw we drew lines, circles, polylines, rectangles, and then we did a few of the editing commands, uh, offsetting, extending, that sort of stuff. Um, uh, first of all, uh, polylines are really great and it was fun to draw them with arcs. There is a special polyline tool called a spline. Now, as uh, I uh, started doing towards the end of the last essay, I am going to pretty much exclusively type in commands. So those of you who are looking for the uh, uh, spline tool, um, you can hunt around here, and it's typically in the drawing area. Uh, I'm on a Mac right now, so uh, it looks like a squiggle. Uh, and again, you can leave that mouse over the tool for the tooltip. Um, I would recommend learning the typed commands. Partly it makes you kind of platform neutral. Uh, the Windows and PC versions, uh, Mac versions, operate the same way. Uh, and also I find it's somehow easier to remember. Some people like to have the visual cues. I don't know, I like to have the words, but whatever. Anyway, spline, S-P-L-I-N-E, is sort of like a polyline, P-L-I-N-E, except that it um, uses arcs. So I'm just going to click a bunch of times, and polylines, uh, sp uh, splines, I'm sorry, um, basically take the uh, line that you just clicked on, the point that you just clicked on, and it draws essentially a kind of Bezier curve. Um, to uh, continue drawing, you can see how it gives you a rubber band line, that dashed yellow line, um, but uh, that yellow line is, is based on the last point, and it kind of, uh, anyway, it draws a, a, a curve. There are a number of options down at the bottom um, that you can uh, click on as well. If you're done, just hit enter to complete the line. Don't double click or escape um, as that has some unusual results. And these splines, they are like other objects in that they have grips which are available for editing um, after the fact and you can move them around um, and you can even uh, modify them in, in more subtle ways. But that's uh, your basic spline. Um, other things that you can do, um, which are kind of fun, uh, I'm going to draw a uh, circle. Okay, make a circle. And I'll make a nice little circle. And I want to make a bunch of copies of that circle, make a pattern. Um, well, I could use the copy command like we did before. Click copy, select the object, hit enter to complete making the selection set, and then give it a base point and some second point of displacement, and I could make a whole bunch of copies that way. However, I want to make a nice regular pattern of uh, circles. Uh, a nice tool for doing that is the array tool, A-R-R-A-Y, array. Like the copy tool, you select the objects that you want to array, and right now I'm just going to do this one circle. Um, when you do that, uh, you see how on my tooltips here, I've give, I'm given three options, a rectangular array, a polar array, and a path array. Um, let's start with rectangular, because that's the easiest. And uh, what you do when you, uh, what happens when you click rectangular is you get a grid of copies of that object, and it has grips like other um, uh, uh, commands. And you can drag those grips up or down, and it makes more copies or fewer. Okay, And same with the ro number of row uh, columns. I can click and drag to change the number of columns. I can also uh, do both at the same time by clicking and dragging this outer uh, grip here. Oops, I can try anyway. Um, and I can change the uh, spacing of the polar, uh, of the rectangular array by clicking the inner arrows. So you see how as I drag this in, it makes a closer array. So if I want some kind of, I don't know, ring pattern, I can drag this in until I get a nice overlap. Okay. What you'll see is that the array maintains its arrayishness uh, 
uh, even after I've hit escape to complete the command. So for example, I can continue to make a larger array using any of these grips, and I can continue to change the spacing after the fact. Uh, and Command-Z brings you back uh, one step in the process. So that's a rectangular array. Um, another kind of array is uh, called a circular array. And uh, again, I'm going to uh, type the array command. Ooh, try to type the array command. And I'll zoom in, select my circle again, hit enter to complete the selection set. This time I'm going to choose polar. Okay. Now, with a polar array, it's kind of like the rotate command. You click the center point first. And I'm going to click off of this object some way, somewhere so that I can create a kind of circle of circles. And you see how uh, when I do that, it says how many do you want, and it has what's the total area, uh, total rotation. I can, uh, like before, click and drag on the grips to change the spacing or the overall uh, kind of length of the array. And like uh, I did before, I can change it after the fact uh, as, I, as I kind of change my mind. The uh, center grip moves the entire array, okay? Now, you might say, that was exciting, but what was that last option? Well, let me show you. I'm going to move this circle up here, and maybe I'll make it just a, just a tad smaller, because it's a little big for my tastes for this particular exercise. Um, and now, when I type in the array command, I can select my object, hit Enter to complete the selection set. But now, when I choose Path, I just select the curve or other line that I, uh, typically a polyline or a spline, that I want the uh, uh, object to copy out on. And like before, there are grips that I can click and drag to edit. Anyway. All right, it's not letting me on that grip. There we go. So you see how I can drag this down to narrow down the spacing. Now the spacing, uh, this is a little bit of an, a large object, so it's a little hard to see what the spacing is. And I, I believe the spacing has something to do with you know how frequently I clicked. You see how you can get kind of a more of a, I don't know, a spirograph effect. Anyway, so there's a number of ways that you can create really interesting patterns, just starting with some simple objects. Um, in this case, uh, starting with a circle. Okay, here's my, here's my original curve, and then here's my circle. All right. Now, um, so that was um, an array. Uh, another really cool tool that you can use to make um, interesting patterns as we design our cool carpet here um, is something called the hatch command. And again, there's a button that you could click on, but I like to just type in hatch. Okay. Um, by the way, I tend to hide all of these buttons if I'm doing a lot of drawing. But uh, right now, I'm going to leave them up so that I can point at them uh, as needed. So uh, the hatch command, it brings up a, a little sort of interactive toolbar here. Um, and uh, obviously, it says hatch. Um, if you look here, there's a little swatch that shows the uh, pattern. Um, if you click on that, you can uh, kind of get some previews of the different patterns, or you can view them here as a um, grid. Some are solid. Some look like things uh, that are recognizable, like herringbone brick or concrete. And uh, typically, these na are named for something that is recognizable. Um, so again, brick patterns or just line patterns um, are all available to you. And you can create your own. Um, and you can scale these to be different sizes. Now, right now, we're working on a drawing. We haven't really set any scale. Um, so it's hard to say what size this pattern is going to come out. But what you need for a hatch pattern is a continuous boundary. So a circle, for example, is a good boundary because uh, it's continuous. It goes all the way around. If it's an open shape, it will not hatch. You'll get an error message. Also, sometimes if you're zoomed in too far so that the computer can't see the boundary, um, it will also give you an error. So I'm going to click inside this uh, circle pattern. Uh, circle, and you see how, first of all, it highlights the circle, and then it draws in the pattern almost immediately. And I can click on different areas, 
and uh, get different effects. You see how this boundary stopped here because of this line. So I have to click on these other areas to change it. Now there's a couple of features that I can change here. I've just added a bunch of uh, brick patterns um, to this area. It didn't want to do the center um, probably because of it, it, it thought I, I didn't want to do that area. I'm not sure why. Um, we might have to do that separately. First of all, um, you can change the angle of the hatch just by clicking and dragging on the circle here, on the little icon. You can also type in a number. Um, the scale is a little tricky because you do kind of have to know the scale of your drawing, but needless to say, we're just drawing a pattern, so we can change the scale so that it just looks the way we want it. I'll change this to 22, and you see how it gets much bigger, and if I change it to 0.2, it gets much smaller. And again, you have to choose what um, scale you want it to look at, uh, what you want it to look like. Anyway, uh, I picked points. I clicked inside of points to tell it where I wanted the hatch to go. You can also select objects if you want. Anyway, when you've got the hatch the way you like it, just hit Escape, or you can hit the little X button to end the hatch pattern. And you might say, well, what if I change my mind? Uh, you can change your mind. Uh, just double click on the hatch, and it brings up a whole hatch edit dialog box. Uh, and this dialog box, you can change any number of things. You can add additional points. You can change the pattern to any number of different patterns. Um, the background color, all sorts of different things um, that uh, we changed before. Um, you can change those again. And uh, anyway, you can click preview to see what it looks like um, or OK to accept the change. So hatching is a lot of fun. Um, and that's a great way when you have something like a carpet where you want to fill in a lot of area, um, you can do that pretty quickly. Using that. Okay, there's a couple of other uh, commands that are available to us as we generate uh, line work for our drawing. Um, another one is called mirror, M-I-R-R, spelled just like the object. And with mirror, you can select a number of objects. I'm going to use my crossing window to select this kind of pool arc. And I'm going to make a mirrored copy um, on the other side of this line. So once I'm done selecting the objects I want to mirror, I hit enter. Just like copy or move or array, you build your selection set and you hit enter when you're done. Now in this case, I need to select a point along this mirroring object. Uh, and you can see down at the bottom, it says select first point on your mirror line. Now I can click anywhere on the drawing if I want the mirror to go at some random angle, but I want it to be on this line. So I move my mouse over the line until I get some kind of green indicator uh, showing that it, it copied that um, line. Anyway, click again to uh, define that line around which the object will, will mirror, mirror copy. It can erase the source objects, which are these guys. So if you want a, these guys to basically flip uh, their direction, that's a good idea to say yes, erase them. I'm going to keep them, so I'll say no. You see how now we have uh, two copies. I'll show you that again. I'll just hit enter and select these lines and draw a copy. When it says erase the source, ob source objects, if I say yes, now I just have the copy. Okay? Back. So mirror is really great. You can uh, get a lot of uh, quick copies. Another good one to use when you're drawing uh, patterns is scale. Now you can't scale certain things like hatch patterns, but you can scale pretty much any other object. I'll scale this re uh, oops, that's a bunch of lines. I'll scale these uh, bunch of lines. Uh, again, build your selection set. Hit enter when you're done. You want to give it a base point. Um, I'm going to give it a base point just in the middle. And now, as you move your mouse away from that base point, the object gets bigger or smaller. And there you go. Click to complete the scale command. Um, I'm going to uh, select these objects. A little quick uh, tip and, and scale them again. Um, I hit enter to uh, activate the same command I just did. If I type in P for previous and hit enter, it selects the previous objects. Just a little tip there. Anyway, I'll hit enter. Now, um, uh, when you scale, you can also scale um, using a reference line. So right now I'm just scaling by kind of drawing some lines, some random lines. If I type in R for reference line, I can click 
on either end of some line that I want to use as a reference and see how now it's grabbed that line. And I could even type in a number. So for example, right now it says 1.7, 1.3, Let's see, new length, uh, it's 1.2. So if I type in 2 and enter, it will change the scale based on whatever number I type in. Or I could just click. So just another way to use the scale tool. All right, a couple of other tools that are useful. Um, if you want two lines to join, you can use the chamfer tool. Okay, and chamfering is like a, um, uh, a tool uh, that you might use in woodworking where you have two lines meet at um, a point or at some angle. So I click on the first line that I want to meet, and then I move my mouse over the second one, and they meet. You can also, by the way, I hit enter to activate chamfer again. You can type in D for distance and specify some distance. Maybe I'll type in uh, one. Now, uh, and the second distance, uh, the chamfer angle can be uh, irregular, so you can now when I click on these two lines, you see how it chamfered them. It actually made a little extra piece there. And I'll do that again. Um, I'll, I'll change the distance to maybe uh, five, the second distance to five. And now when I meet them, see how it makes an even bigger chamfer. So it's a kind of design um, feature. Same with fillet. Fillet, not fillet like a fish, but fillet. Um, you can uh, add a radius, I type in R for radius, and maybe I'll make it, uh, let's make it uh, well, let's make it two, just to see what we come up with. And uh, like before, you select your first object and your second object, and it will curve the corner. Again, you have to be drawing in some scale and have some sense of what that means in terms of reality. Okay. Now, um, that's uh, chamfer and fillet. There's a few other uh, modification uh, commands out there um, to help you edit objects. Uh, stretch is a good one, a good one to use. I'll type in the word stretch and hit enter. Now, when you use the stretch command, you have to use a crossing window. Why do you have to use a crossing window? I don't know. Just ask the auto. Anyway, when you use the stretch command, what will happen is you can grab a number of objects. Um, usually, it, essentially, it's good to think about it as sort of like you're grabbing a bunch of grips. So I'm going to grab the edges of these uh, objects here. I'm done selecting objects. And by the way, stretch really only works when you have one selection uh, crossing window like that. Anyway, I'll, uh, it's sort of like the move command, except now I'm basically just moving the grips that were selected when I do that. So you see how I can stretch these guys up like that. I can stretch different individual elements, and I can even stretch single points. Okay? If you stretch a single point that has an arc, I don't know what happens. Oh, I guess it stretches the arc. Look at that. Very cool. Now, uh, so we've done a number of things. Um, one other thing that you can do, if you've drawn a polyline, but you want to kind of break it up, uh, into its constituent points uh, or pieces, um, you can use the explode command. Now, right now, this is a polyline. If I click explode, select the polyline, and hit enter, now I have all these pieces, and that's a quick way to kind of make the polyline, um, remove pieces of the polyline without going through. Um, there's a whole uh, p edit command um, that uh, allows you to. Uh, make changes to a polyline, but that's sort of the quick and dirty way. All right, now, uh, so we've got a, a wonderful uh, drawing so far. We've got a lot of very, frankly, a lot of very random stuff in here, um, but that's fine um, for demonstration purposes. Now, uh, the last uh, piece that um, we want to do here is um, see if we can get some different line weights. Now, I've mentioned uh, in uh, class, in our real class, that three line weights is kind of the minimum for any drawing. Um, and that, that sounds like a reasonable uh, attitude to take for a computer drawing. You know, there, there are still drawings. Um, but the way you achieve that is a little different. Okay, You might say, well, why don't I just click an object and choose a different line weight? Now, you could do that, but typically AutoCAD it arranges line weights and line types, which is to say, is it dashed or is it dash dot or whatever, by layer. 
Now, layers are a way of organizi organizing a drawing. Every object, if you click on it, it has a layer. Now, on a Mac, the Properties menu is always up. And actually, I, I closed the Layers menu just for clarity right now, but that's also always up here. So if you look um, on the right side of your screen, you'll see the Properties menu. If you're on a PC, you will have to right-click on the object and choose Properties to get this menu to show up. Anyway, um, when I click on this object, it shows me that the layer that it's on is zero. You'll see a number of other features in this Properties menu, including the color. Now, notice how it says By Layer. You usually set all objects' properties by layer. See even the line type, and there's only a couple in this drawing, and line weight, and there's a number of different line weights. Look how dark we can draw. Um, but they're all by layer. So what we need are some more layers. Now, to get more layers, you have to type in a command to call up the Layer uh, Properties Manager, and that word is, you guessed it, layer. Just type in layer, and it brings up your Layer Properties menu. Now, the Mac and PC versions do look a little different. The PC version has a bunch more options here. Um, some of the, if I right-click on a uh, where it says Name, there are some of the things, these are some of the things that are showing up on the PC menu. I can, I can make this a little, uh, a little longer here just so that the PC people have something familiar um, to look at. Let's see, add transparency, all this stuff. Anyway, each of these columns in the menu here, I'll just stretch them out by moving my mouse over the boundary between these objects, uh, between these columns. Um, these are properties of the layers. Okay, now right now layer zero is kind of the default layer, but you really shouldn't draw anything on layer zero. Layer zero has kind of certain magical properties that we'll get to uh, in the next lecture, but for now, leave it, uh, leave it uh, with nothing on it if possible. So what I need to do, I need to make a new layer. So if you look down here, there's a, what looks like a stack of uh, sheets of paper or something. If you click that button, it creates a new layer, and I'm going to make layers for the different line weights that I want. So I'm going to go with light, line weight, for the first one. And uh, the way you set the line weight, over here in this column, um, this is the line weight column. What you have to do, right now it's the default line weight. I don't even know what the default line weight is. But I can choose a physical dimension for that line. Now, interesting enough, the lightest line weight is zero, which you might think is non-existent. It has no dimension, but for whatever reason, zero is the smallest uh, line weight, um, and it does exist. Um, so I usually use zero. For the I'm going to make a new layer, and for this one, I'm going to call it medium, and I'm going to make another one and call it heavy. Okay. Now, a heavy line weight might be something like uh, 0.6 or even 0.8. Okay, and you can have more than three. I'm just creating three. Right now. Anyway, medium might be somewhere in the middle. Okay, 0.35 is a pretty good line weight. Okay, we're not drawing anything architectural right now, so you can you can frankly make any line uh, type that you want. Um, and in fact, in theory, you could add color and other things to these uh, layers if you just click on uh, the box that represents the color to the left of the name, you could change it to different colors. Um, here, I'll make the heavy lines red, the light lines uh, cyan, and the medium lines uh, magenta. And I think that will be a lovely drawing. Now, I don't, uh, uh, I don't have a color printer handy, so these lines are going to come out um, as grayscale, which is just Jim Dandy with me. Okay, so uh, I've created these different line weights um, how do I change object, objects to the different line weights? Well, first of all, you select objects like we were doing when we were grip editing. And maybe I want to make these outer lines a heavy line weight. Um, have your property menus up. And uh, when you select those objects, when you choose from this drop-down list under layers, when you choose a different layer, it will switch them to that layer. So you see how, I'll just hit escape, that now those lines are colored the uh, color of the heavy line. And again, I can select other objects and I'll make them medium. 
And then I can select, maybe I'll select the hatch pattern and I'll make it the light. Okay, now you might say, I'm not seeing a whole lot of line weights here. These all look pretty much exactly the same. Um, the reason is because AutoCAD doesn't display line weights by default. And you'll see real very soon why that is. Uh, down here in your drawing modes at the bottom of the screen, um, there is a uh, mode which is the show or hide line weight. If I click that button, like magic, you now see the line weights visible. And you might say, oh, that's, you know, that's really great. What if I want to change my line weights? Uh, if you go back to your layer menu, let's say that heavy line, let's say I want it to be really heavy. If I choose two and okay, it should get a lot darker. Now, what AutoCAD will do is it will uh, exaggerate uh, or it will minimize the line weight depending on how far out you've zoomed. So as I zoom in, you may notice that the, the dimension of that line in terms of like pixels is actually probably about the same depending on how much I zoom. But you see how as I zoom out, even just a few pixels and these double lines become very muddy. So that's why a lot of people like to draw with no line weights. See how it, it's a lot easier to read in doubt, especially I'm on a laptop screen, so it's pretty small. Anyway, so that is basically how you can get a drawing with um, a number of different really interesting objects um, using some of the advanced commands, and you can get some basic line weights. Now I'll go and I'll uh, change all the rest of these objects off of layer zero and onto a layer that has a line weight that I like, and I'll probably print out a test copy at some point to see if I like it. And that is the lecture.